is to build a bridge between Africa and uh, Africa and Black America. Mm-hmm. There, there should be a bridge. There should be a relationship because there has not been that bridge, right? Mm-hmm. And so, a part of what we do, we're building that bridge. We're building and establishing relationships so that. African Americans can understand that you are supported and loved in Africa. You're not hated or or despised in Africa. You are loved in Africa. And this relationship that we need to have will benefit both of we need each other. Africans need black Americans, black Americans need Africans. And yeah. your highest educated group of people that enter America, that immigrate to America are Nigerian. They have the highest level of education. And they have the greatest success rate in entrepreneurship. Africans, not Europeans, but Africans. Truth is that most Africans that um, that show up in America, most of them do well. Mm. Because um, what has happened in America, there's a lot that Americans take for granted. There's a lot of opportunity that is there that most Americans don't, they take it for granted. And they don't go after it. So when Africans show up in America... They say, what? All right, it's your boy Kev Kelly once again. You're on the Man Kings and Queens talk show. I'm beside me, I got... Shiloh, Shiloh, Smooth Shiloh, the original one. <laughs> and the beautiful lady in the house. <laughs> hey guys, it's your governor's Go Vibes, aka V. And again, I have a special guest in the house. The big Jane. Please let's welcome <laughs> Mr. Cedric Singleton. Thank you, thank you. Applause. The CEO of Black Market Records. Mm-hmm. You know what it is? Shiloh, Shiloh. What, what what do you think about this? The fact that we have the big man in the house. That guy? Mm-hmm. I feel I'm him. The presence is here. <laughs> tap tap the anointing. I, I feel, let me tell you a little bit. Tap the you anointing. Let me let me tell you a little bit that that you don't talk about this gentleman. Mm-hmm. He has been in this industry for the longest time possible, and he has worked and been patient with both the poor and the most talented artists. He respects everybody's hustle. Mm. If he can come down to Africa and say, hey, let me go and help and groom these young Africans without experience to bring them to the level of making international music, to have international acclaim, I think that guy deserves respect. Mm -hmm. So in my presence here, Mm. I have the CEO of Black Market Records, one of the most successful record companies um, um, working in Africa, hustling in not just for their self-interest, but in the interest of the artists and every person who works with them as well. Yeah. That's why I respect you're, this gentleman. You're already tapping in anointing. Mr. Yeah. Cedric Singleton. Yeah, what's how, up? How are you today? I'm good. How are you? You're looking fresh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, for real, you're really looking fresh. Thank you, thank we you. We glad to have you on the show. Mm-hmm. How, um, I believe you, apparently you in Uganda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Where, where do you spend most of the time? The States? No, I spend most of my time in, in Africa. In uh, Africa? I, yeah, I spend about maybe 20% of my time in America, and then the rest of it is in Africa. Uh, split mostly between Kenya and Uganda. I wanted to dive into, uh, you know, a small question. Mm-hmm. Uh, America, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had I heard someone someone tweet 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 on social media, and no one was saying, uh, why why is it that many Americans say the U.S. is horrible, is a horrible bit? Mm-hmm. So many people from other countries in Africa. So many people from other countries in Africa dream of living in the U.S. Mm-hmm. and yet Americans say that the U.S. they actually find a hard time mm-hmm. staying there. Mm-hmm. How relevant is that? Well, comment? I, I think America is um, is the greatest country in the world, and um, but the experience of Africa is a different experience, right? And I would I, I understand why if I spent my entire life in Africa, why I would want to go to America. 
because I would feel the same way too because I had spent my entire life in America and I wanted to see something different. I wanted to see what Africa had in store for me. And so I don't um, say that a person should not go to America, but there's opportunity also right here in Africa. So you don't necessarily have to go to America for opportunity. There's opportunity everywhere here in Africa. I would beg to venture there's more opportunity here in Africa than in America. Because okay. once, once you get to America, you're going to find that mostly everything has been done. It's finished. And you're going to have to really compete in the American marketplace. And it is really competitive. But here in Africa, there's so many things that are not done. One man's problem is another man's opportunity. Oh, true. <laughs> true, true, true. Do you agree that? Yeah, what? Totally. Yeah, you know, you know what? It's just like in trading. Whether it's going up or down, someone's making money off, off, off something. You know, it's funny how, how, how many people in... I'll speak for Uganda because mm-hmm. I'm we in Uganda right now. Mm-hmm. You find many, most especially the girls say, if I go to the States... Mm-hmm. If I go to the States, there I'm a I'm a be rich. Mm-hmm. Yeah? yeah. But you find that it's, it's it's way different. Ain't ain't I think it's just like a mentality or something. Yeah. Yeah. What's so special in, in the States that it ain't here in Uganda? Mr. Said. Well, let me tell you. Uh, uh in America, <laughs> um like I said, I've been to a lot of different places in the world and everywhere that I go. There are people who are trying to get to America. It's not just um, Africa. When I'm in Cuba, people will try to swim 90 miles. They will risk everything by walking 3,000 miles to get to America. There's something special about America. I will n- not, I, will, I, I cannot lie. Mm-hmm. America represents a lot of opportunity. If you're willing to work hard, uh, there are people who and will support you in the American system. But America is not perfect either. There's a lot of problems with America, right? And some people can thrive in the American system and some people cannot. Uh, so that's, that's what I would have to say about America. America, to me, again, is the greatest country in the world. So there are people that can go to America right now and they don't thrive at all. There's some people. But the truth is that most Africans that, um, that show up in America, most of them do well. Mm-hmm. Because um, what has happened in America, there's a lot that Americans take for granted. There's a lot of opportunity that is there that most Americans don't, they take it for granted and they don't go after it. So when Africans show up in America, they say, what? They take advantage of the opportunity because they have worked really hard to get there. Okay. They didn't go there to play. So most of the guys that I saw, met from, uh, from Africa, those guys worked hard. They didn't play like we Americans did. They came to Africa, I mean, came to America, and they were not playing. They were the ones who had the best performances academically. Mm-hmm. Most Africans show up in America, and they all do, most of them all do well okay. because the opportunity is there that, again, Americans take for granted. Um, it, most of your, um, your highest educated group of people that enter America, that immigrate to America, are Nigerian. They have the highest level of education and they have the greatest success rate in entrepreneurship. Africans, not Europeans, but Africans. How true is this tweet? I, I, I saw a tweet, someone, uh, someone saying uh, black people in America mm-hmm. find, find it hard complying with the offices that are there. Mm-hmm. How true is that? Well, there is some. There is uh, systemic uh, racism in the uh, police department in America. There's a, a systemic uh, uh, systemic racism in the justice department. So it's not just the police. Yeah. It is the judges. It is the the probation officers. It is uh, there's lawyers. It's all of it's throughout the entire fabric of America. There is racism, but in America also you find people who are not racist. You'll find people who will support you. So. The, the simplify and understanding of a country is a disservice. There's broad spectrum of everything. You find good people there. You find bad people in Africa. You'll find good people. You'll find bad people. You find people who will try to take from you, and you find people who will try to support you. It's the same thing. It is a part of being human. If you go to China, it's the same thing. 
There are good people there and there are bad people there. And America is no different. Yeah, yeah suppose, suppose I'm, uh, I'm a, let's say I'm, and I'm, a, I'm a black man mm -hmm. in the US mm -hmm. and I don't want to get caught up in this racism mm -hmm. kind of uh, a conflict mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. politics of racism. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to to say the whites are bad, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. the blacks are not good, mm -hmm. or that kind of stuff, and I just want to play my game clean. Mm -hmm. Would it be unfair for for the, the for the black community in the U.S.? No, I think that uh, anybody that uses racism as an excuse, I, I think it's an excuse. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but there have been so many people who have succeeded. There are some people who will fail, who will fall for the tricks of racism. Mm -hmm. And so as a community, we just have to do a better job of guiding and directing people around those traps. There are so many traps in America for people who are not aware. And so as a community, sometimes in America, we fail the young, younger generation by not guiding them. Yeah. And so as a community, we are to blame. I would never say or blame racism for anything. It may be the reason, but I, I won't use that excuse. Okay, so do black lives matter or also, of course, white lives only matter? Well, no, with the whole notion of black lives matter is that in America, there are so many reminders that throughout your life as a black person that your life may not matter. Mm -hmm. uh, it does not seem to matter to police who commit uh, crimes against civilian black people. Mm -hmm. Um and so for that reason, the, the statement that black lives matter is a statement that basically says our lives matter also. Mm -hmm. Not to say that because my life matters, your life doesn't matter. Yeah. We just have to constantly remind ourselves mm -hmm. and we have to remind those people in America that our lives matter as well. Yes. You, yeah, know, you, know, you, you know how long you've been in Africa? Mm -hmm. You know how long you've been in Africa? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do you really think... Uh, based on what you saw, the structures, the mm. dilapidated, uh, the developing, the mm. coming up uh, projects, mm -hmm. the upcoming projects, sorry. Do you really think colonialism is to blame for the African poverty at the well, moment? Well, I think colonialism plays a role in the, um, in, the, in the difficulties of Africa. But hopefully with the younger leadership, mm -hmm. with less corruption, Africa will thrive. I think that uh, one of the, the biggest problems of Africa is corruption. Yeah. And, um, and so with corruption, your society will be corrupt. There will be money spent on things that it should not be spent on. And as, a, as young democracies, um, countries have to learn how, not, how to do a better job in managing corruption. Um, so um, that's what I would say about Africa. It's not colonialism. It's something that um, that countries still have to pay debts. Okay. And so money that, that tends to go towards foreign countries yeah. mm -hmm. and not in, spent in the country mm -hmm. causes the country to lag behind. Yeah. Okay. Mm. yeah so sure. like, um, Mr. Cedric, mm. like, why do you think the democracy is failing to deliver um, economic growth in Africa? Well, I don't think it's, it's, it's a democracy is a problem. It is um, opportunity. Uh, it is um, people investing money into the country. Like, say, if you want to invest in roads, then why don't you invest in roads and have that money show up on the road and not show up in somebody's house or so or the cars that they drive, right? It should show up in the development of the country. Uh, Africa is one of the most educated places in the world, right? Yeah. But what happens when kids graduate from university and there are no jobs, right? Because that entrepreneurial thing, the the, the government, I think, yeah. should have play a role in developing private industry. Mm -hmm. It should develop. It should it should play a role in making sure that the talented people of Africa stay in Africa. They should be rewarded. They should not want to go to America. They should be able to earn a decent living and live a decent lifestyle. Here in Africa. Yeah, you remember during the COVID time, mm -hmm. there's a time you're trying to help uh, government of Uganda, for mm -hmm. instance. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the other countries, mm -hmm. but the ones that I, the, something I knew literally, you're trying to help the government of Uganda mm -hmm. access um, a more affordable, low cost immunization. COVID kit. tests. Yeah, COVID yeah. tests. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. um, what, was the, what, what were the hurdles you faced in, in general perspective 
of what else you'd have done in well, that time? Well, I had um, some friends in America who had some really quick a result COVID test. You know, back then yeah. it would take a long time. They had rapid results. It's just who it is that you present it to, right? Yeah. You can't present it to people because everybody is trying to make money off of the deal. And, and that caused things to fall apart. Yes, It's not the interest of the country. It's all a selfish thing that yeah. people are looking at how much money can I make from this? Not the fact that the COVID test will help to um, make things move faster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because uh, I remember that time, uh, mm -hmm. it, it was really a hard time, man. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. you know and you are, you are so faithful <laughs> to, to the African community, mm -hmm. trying to help them uh, access low-cost um, health uh, saving, mm -hmm. life saving, you know, health materials. Mm -hmm. And it, it was really, you know, heart touching. Yes. And, that. and then you had projects you are planning to carry out in, in Africa, mm. and uh, that's why I'm saying, okay, yeah, we face that kind of thing. Mm. Now, how smart should someone, what should someone know? What are the commandments? Let's say like four commandments. Mm. The laws. He, he, four commandments an Afro-American investor would like to know or to obey before they come down into Africa to carry out every kind of project they want. Mm -hmm. what, are, what kind of, what, what are the four commandments? They don't exist, but try to kind of... I would uh, say commandment number one, mm. build a team in Africa. Okay. Yeah. I would say you, you, if you're, you, your team has to be African-based too mm. because it is a different thing for me to go and try to conduct business in Uganda as opposed to a Ugandan trying to conduct business in Uganda. And so you have to build a local base and a local family or community for your businesses to, to um, thrive. You have to also, too, be consulted by local Ugandans so that you can understand how the game is played, right? Mm -hmm. You can understand how the game is played. And, and three, you are going to have to work very hard in this environment. And number four, it is not going to be easy. Yeah, and number five, yeah. do not mm. forget this one. Mm. It's always good to contact or consult somebody who has been there before you. Yes. And in this case, it's Cedric Singleton. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so like, say, like as an African-American, mm -hmm. like, is he, is he, w would you currently, like, rather suffer racism in some, mo like, in the States mm -hmm. out there rather than underdeveloped countries like mm -hmm. here in Africa? Like, me, um, I think sometimes um, being outside of Africa, when people speak of racism, this perspective is kind of bad because mm -hmm. I, even though I've seen racism, it has not stopped me, right? Yeah. It, ha it has not, um, it just meant that I had to take a different route, right? It's not a, a, a impassable barrier, right? I yeah. think that you just have to outsmart. My thoughts are, if once somebody gives you the rules to the game, you should learn how to play the game mm. based on those rules. Sure. And so if racism is a component of, of America, then don't let it stop you because there are ways around that. Yeah. So don't be a fool. Yeah. Yeah, don't 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 fail because of racism. You should you should achieve because of racism. Yeah. That, that brings me to uh what's your perception? What's your perception of when you see a white man trying to act as a black man. I've seen a couple of movies, yeah, mm -hmm. where uh, uh, I've watched I've watched a movie called Bodied, mm -hmm. where a white dude was trying to find approval of saying the word mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then I've uh, today morning I was watching Fresh Fresh Prince of Bel Air, mm -hmm. and this guy, the black the, the black dude, finds white dudes singing a song that has in it and mm -hmm. then he like hola 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 you ain't allowed to say mm -hmm. i mean that's you're not supposed to say nigga. so how what's your perception well, well first of that? all my perception of that word is that i think we as black people have given that word too much power mm -hmm. it's just a word it's, it doesn't mean actually anything. you say it's just a word it's yeah. just a word bro i mean tell me a word that you can say to white people that makes them cringe what is that word now how are we as a people Consider ourselves to be a strong people, and we are broken down by a word. If, uh, um, 
I start to say F that word, but <laughs> the word means yeah. absolutely nothing to me. You can, white people can say it, mm-hmm. yellow people can say it. It just doesn't move me either way. I think one of the biggest mistakes that uh, we have made as black people in America is giving that word power. Let me tell you this story. All right. I was here in Africa and a white guy got really angry as an as some African staff here in Africa. And he pulled out the word nigger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He called the guy a nigger. Yeah. And you know what effect it had? Mm-hmm. Nothing. That word meant absolutely nothing to the African guy. Because he it, meant nothing. It, it had no power, right? Yeah. So white people go to that word. Fun. They go to that word because they think it's going to hurt mm-hmm. black people, right? Yeah. And yeah. black people have shown them oh, years and years that it, they use this word. We're going to protest. We're going to do over a, over a damn word. And, and guess what? You know something about that? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, uh, here in uh, in Africa, mm-hmm. when, when someone says they think that is you it's know, cool it's cool yeah. bro yeah, yeah I'm <laughs> the let me tell you though know, the, the look on the white guy's face when he got no reaction from nobody mm. was priceless <laughs> <laughs> it was priceless it didn't work he's probably yeah. expecting the reaction he was, he was expecting him to crumble because yeah. it work yeah, and the guy was say? just like you didn't say what you didn't say anything I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I tell you the, the, the had, fact is you see it's, it's, I think it also comes down to the thing mm. before she comes up with the next stuff. Mm. Um, uh, you know, the way we market our our weaknesses is really on the wrong note. Yeah, I, I think one of the reasons why Africans like to go to the US or other countries mm. uh, that are a bit low privileged like mm. to go to the US mm. is because of the marketing mm. and because the way the system is set in place and what they market. Hollywood McDonald's, everything is big, everything's nice, and mm. everything's good. And mm. they say, hey, you have the right. And then how someone can speak up to a cop, ah, the right. Mm. How they speak up to cops, you know? Mm. That is not there in Africa. Mm. Yeah. You can't walk up to a police guy mm. and I tell him like, that I have the, I have the right. right. I have the right. <laughs> and in America, only white people could do that. Yeah. Black people can't do that. White okay. people care. Yeah. Why is white people care so because the, the the white people have what they call white privilege. Mm-hmm. They have the ability to talk back to the police. Yeah. They have the ability to fight the police and survive. Okay. Black people can't do those things, okay. right? Okay. Because what, why? What causes all this? Because because they fear us. Okay. They fear the myth of the black man. Mm-hmm. They fear the myth of the black man sexually. Yeah. They fear the myth of the black <laughs> man's power. Right? Mm-hmm. They. Fear Fear black people, so any time they come, con- they come into contact with black people, they are afraid. They're intimidated. They're intimidated so by they will, us. You know, do they, all those so kind of they things. will, they will over exaggerate their reaction mm, based on their. Sometimes I um, I say I give those guys an excuse, a path. Because they haven't had no experience with black people. Because if you had any experiences with black people, you would not fear. Black mm-hmm. people, yeah. you would understand that black people are just like you are, yeah. just like my experiences with white people. Mm-hmm. I don't fear; I'm not intimidated by white people. I say they're just like everybody else. Yeah, true. There's a, sometimes in Africa, the myth of the white man in Africa is great. Mm-hmm. It's a great thing. They think white people are better, yeah. and I have been up close and personal, and they are not. Okay, they are not better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have. Uh, they have done a great job of promoting themselves. Mm. They have, you know, and now Africa should be doing the same thing. Now, through our music, through film, through our um, uh, our media, mm. we can change the narrative that we how and how we see ourselves. Malcolm X said the greatest, um, that the worst thing white people ever did was to teach us to hate ourselves. Mm. And so you find that self-hatred. I see it in, in Africa also when there's a preference for anything that is white. They prefer this white guy. They prefer this white woman over black people. I just don't and, agree and, with I that. i tell you something <laughs> about that. Let me yeah. tell you the other side of the story. Mm. Underground. Mm. What happens is that you see there are a couple of Africans mm. who have benefited from these white folks. Mm. Okay. Like you, you get a, a lady who has no hair or mm-hmm. hair is mm-hmm. over her property. Mm-hmm. And then she'll give this often um, or a street boy or some poor privileged guy in Africa sign her. Mm. Uh, most of her inheritance mm-hmm. or her money or her wealth. Mm-hmm. In case she dies, it goes to this man, to, to the community. So there are few, probably less than a handful of that, mm-hmm. but they've actually worked in marketing mm-hmm. the white 
Um, so they, they tell their own stories. And yeah. I think what, what we do as black people, we allow other people to tell our stories. Yeah, I yeah. think that that is changing, right? You see our stories being told by us. Yeah, yeah. If you allow yeah. somebody else to tell your story, then yeah, you're a yeah. sucker, mm. right? You're a sucker to let somebody else tell your narrative because in that story, mm. they're always going to make themselves look better. Okay. Yeah, so, so we have to do a better job of telling our own stories. We have to, we have to um, tell our own narratives. We have to be the, the creators of our own image. Yeah. And that image has to be a, an image that black is beautiful. Yeah. Black people are the most beautiful people in the world. Yeah. They're the most talented and most intelligent and most creative. They're the strongest people God has ever created. Yeah. And that has to be our, na- our narrative. It can't yeah. be anything less than that. We can never place anybody above us. Yeah. And you are a fool mm. if you ever place anybody above you. Yeah, true. No matter what they are or who they are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, so like Cedric, you, 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 we, we all know that you're the main. You be, you've been to a couple of states and all that. Mm-hmm. But like, have you, have you seen a billion of Africans like out there, mm-hmm. when we're not in Africa, but they, they're there in the states and all that? Yeah, America has about um, 50, 60, 70 million um, black people. Okay. Um, and any time um, that the playing field has been even or fair, mm-hmm. um, black people excel. Okay. You can see that in music because they're, you know, when artists go and create, it's a fair, it's a fair playing field. When they uh, compete in athletics, it's always a, it's, when that guy walks up to that starting line and that gun goes off, there's no more racism. It's the best man shall win. And so sometimes there are people who try to gain an advantage to, and use racism. They use their advantage to try to, to advance their own selves. Mm-hmm. And they and, and advance the cells of others. And another thing that what we have to do as black people is we have to work together. Yeah. You cannot win in things if you're doing it by yourself, right? Yeah. I would I would rather help um help my friends succeed because now I have successful friends, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There are people who um that I have given um, opportunity to shoot music videos okay. years and years ago. Those yeah. guys are now big filmmakers. Yeah. And so and these are the same people who are my friends in my network. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have to get out of this selfish mentality that only I can succeed. Mm-hmm. No, it's okay for everyone to succeed. There's enough room for everyone to succeed. And so yeah. we should support each other. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't stop trying to, to knock the other guy down or or trying to make it hard for him to succeed because it does not mean you can't succeed. Yeah. It's good for this guy to succeed. Mm-hmm. There's still room for you to succeed. It's not only one successful person. There could be a thousand successful people. Yeah. We have to have a mentality of there is more than enough than a mentality of lack. Yeah. Mm. yeah so have you noticed like, one thing about Mr. Singleton? Yeah. Mm. Team. Yeah, team. Team. Teamwork. 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 Yeah. I'm yeah. liking that. Teamwork. And, and, and you see something that is that he I mean, I mean, he's been giving us, feeding us all good information mm-hmm. but you know there's a thing of hey you guys come join me in africa this can work yes. yeah i mean mm-hmm. that is really a good thing there's a thing too that i have always a part of my mission here is to build a bridge between africa and uh, africa and black america mm-hmm. there, there should be a bridge there should be a relationship because there has not been that bridge, right? Mm-hmm. And so a part of what we do, we're building that bridge. We're building and establishing relationships so that African Americans can understand that you are supported and loved in Africa. You're not hated or, or despised in Africa. You are loved in Africa. Mm-hmm. And this relationship that we need to have will benefit both of us. We need each other. Africans need black Americans. Black Americans need Africans. And, yeah. and, and from that understanding, the world is ours. Yeah, mm. the world is ours. Yeah. Mr. Said, mm. I, I, I have a uh, black American. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we have in a situation where uh, we have a rampant case of drugs that mm. flow within America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we were having a tweet here that says that why, why, why does, someone was asking, why does crack affect the white fox, the white fox appearance so much compared to black people's? Yeah. Actually, I heard the saying that crack is a white man's drug. No, that's the, it's the opposite. Crack is a, a, a drug that is a very cheap drug and it has destroyed 
a large sector of black America, not white America. No white America. Not white America. It is crack has been really devastating to the black community in America. Is it sponsored in the black community in America? Yes, it is. It has it, it, it's its effect it's is getting smaller. Mm. What you're talking about currently, there's a, a epidemic of fentanyl. Okay. Mm-hmm. That is the drug that is destroying uh, white America. Mm-hmm. Because it is a uh, a drug that people are using and it is deadly. I think it kills about a hundred thousand Americans every year. A hundred thousand will die from fentanyl problem, and so um, that drug has been devastating to America, mostly white America. But there are black people who are getting caught up in that as well. But so the percentage like- is lower. They're lower, yes. What yeah. what could be the cause of people consuming this drug, uh, regardless of the dangers? Um, drugs are something that has been uh, a part of the world, and it's like very few countries don't have a drug problem. The reason why uh, a lot of people here in Africa just done that because it's not here, right? It hasn't, it has not made it here, and so the government has done a really good job of trying to stop it from getting here. Um, but the use of drugs is something that is a, is a part of the human experience and the human condition. Yeah. And so, um, so, and so that's just the way it is. That people use drugs everywhere. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Cedric, b- before we, before we wrap up this mm-hmm. whole thing, you know that, um, there is something that that's been going through my head and all that. Mm-hmm. So I want to ask you this question, like specifically, like, like Mrs. Cedric, are you a passport, bro? Hmm? Are you a passport, bro? Am I a passport, bro? What is that? <laughs> passport, bro. I, I mean, <laughs> who get attracted to? To ladies mm. in other like foreign countries, oh, there. Yeah, I think the women of Africa are incredible. Yes, yes, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the women of Africa. Are so yeah, I was man. like, yes. You know, Africans mm-hmm. are winning this. Yeah, well, Africa winning. Mm. Yeah. It's a lady who's just asked that question. Yeah. That. I know, right? <laughs> you know what it means. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no worries. <laughs> I couldn't even By the way, um, you need to remember this is sponsored by Black Market Records today, yeah. special mm. edition. And yeah, and peaceful home, home care. care. Yeah, yeah, Virginia, excelling care, improving lives. You know, for hospitality. Yeah. So, um, by the way, Cedric has given out his heart, and there is much more he can deliver to you if you DM him, inbox him, follow him up on social media on the handles below. Yeah on the screen right now. So um, you guess what? I, I just want to ask Cedric one last small question. Yeah. Is there any place better than Africa? Absolutely not. Nah. You got it. <laughs> it's a no-go. Oh my God. My producers, please give us applause. Applause to the Africans. <laughs> 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 so beautiful. Uh, well, actually, guys, don't forget, man. What? Passport bro like me? I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, passport, bro. Yeah, she actually <laughs> says she does black, she don't do white. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. What, what's about me that you don't like? Passport bro, don't, don't do. You can't do your your fellow like you know nationality. You Are you sure? passport bro? <laughs> <laughs> like if guys, you know, you get me. I'm, I'm a Ugandan really. Mm-mm. Nah, Shello. <laughs> Shello. The name, the name itself, you know. Are you Kev? Okay, you must have told us certain things. You see, now Cedric. These people think I'm Ugandan. Yeah, I know. We know. <laughs> we know you from. We Guys, know you from Brooklyn. Again, <laughs> once again, this is the Kings, the, the 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 man Kings and Queens talk show. The men of work. Yeah, the, the men. Are, of course, the men at work. We are is working and full day, twenty right twenty four right hours. Here, yeah, we got a queen. She, she ain't just a lady. She a queen. You know? She a queen. Please don't forget, Guys, man, work is our YouTube channel. Keep on liking, subscribing, sharing, and leaving a comment. Why you you find a topic you want us to talk about, just leaving a comment. I will dive into that. And-